One of the quickest ways to add cooling potential to your system is to add an all-in-one water cooling loop. So today we're gonna to talk about uh, AIOs in particular, how to choose the right size for you because the summer months are coming. Winter was coming and it came and it went and it was kind of like, eh. But summer's coming and you know, you're, you're gonna melt, but your computer doesn't have to. So let's talk about AIOs. Take overclocking reliability to the next level with the new Z390 Dark motherboard from EVGA. The Z390 Dark is built for extreme overclocking utilizing features such as a 10 layer PCB, 17 phase power delivery, triple BIOS, and 150% more gold content meaning you get more of what you need to build the ultimate Intel based PC. To learn more about the Z390 Dark and its world class features, visit EVGA.com. Okay, so what I've got here are four different coolers from Corsair. They sent these over specifically for us to do this talking head piece, but what we're gonna talk about is not features. We're not gonna talk about RGB. We're not gonna talk about uh, any of the like RGB fans or software. We're gonna talk specifically about the two components that matter most in an all-in-one water cooling loop. That being the radiator and the fans. Now the pump in all four of these is pretty much the same. They are based off of an Asetek design. So there's, uh, there's, there's a lot of similarities between all four of these. But what you're gonna find here is that what we're gonna talk about today is going to apply to most brands. So you can take some of the confusion out of it by being like, well, Jed, I'm not getting a Corsair cooler. That's okay, because what we're gonna talk about here on the specifics in terms of sizing is going to carry over with the only difference really being the fan designs, the RPM, static pressure, and that sort of stuff. So let's get started. So what we have here is a small, medium, and large offering from Corsair, but the information I'm gonna tell you uh, today, or at least provide you today, is not specific to Corsair themselves, but they were, of course, kind enough to send over the, the visual aids for me to talk about this. Um, so what we've got here is the H60, the H100i Pro, and the H150i Pro. And as you can see, obviously, as you move from your left to right, this is a single 120, a dual 120, and a triple 120. This is kind of the norm. Now we've seen other sizes sort of pop up, 280s, which are 140 millimeter fan variants and stuff, but that's just because we have seen, we're seeing a lot more cases start to support 140 millimeter radiators um, that you're starting to see that. But the information I'm gonna give you here regarding 120s is applicable to 140 millimeter fans as well. Now, one of the things you have to keep in mind before you can start to decide which cooler is best for you is what case are you using? Those are the two things that are more responsible and compatible with each other in terms of uh, you know, picking out your parts than the CPU. A lot of people might go, well, I've got a 9900K, so this isn't gonna get the job done because that's a hot CPU. Well, no, to be honest, this would actually do a great job at cooling a stock speed 9900K and keeping it well below TJ Maxx. The issue here is gonna be if you try and get a 360 millimeter radiator but cram it into some sort of an ITX case or a, uh, a mid tower that is not going to be able to support a 360 or it's not gonna have the space between the top of the case and the motherboard or even on the front, then it doesn't really matter what CPU you're running because it's not going to fit. Now the other thing that you wanna keep in mind when it comes to these is their max uh, wattage that they're capable of dissipating or their max rating. This is one of those formulas that you kind of have to take with a grain of salt because just like fan statistics, a lot of companies will like to show the best possible rating, which is usually going to be in a non-restrictive open environment where the fan has nothing in front of it, nothing behind it, no case, no radiator. It's just sitting here on a table and the amount of static pressure and airflow that it can move at max RPM under those conditions. Once you stick it in a case or you put a fan on a radiator or you have any sort of resistance, that number can fall off sharply and quickly if the fan is not up to par when it comes to the task being given to it. So what you're gonna need to keep in mind though, and that, that what seems like a digress conversation does tie in is because the fan in all of these plays a very big part. Interestingly enough, all three of these do not have the same fan attached to them. You could also have a low RPM, low static pressure fan, that would cause the temperatures in this uh, H60 to climb versus having a high static pressure, high RPM fan at the sake of noise is going to then bring the temperatures down. So what you're gonna find are the ratings on the box are usually gonna be dependent on the fan that comes with the kit at its max RPM, which is also gonna be its most noisy. You'll find 120s to be the most common AIOs that are included with things like uh, graphics cards and hybrids and stuff like that because I've always found that a single 120 millimeter radiator is more than enough to cool off a single non overclocked component. The H60 is also going to be a great solution for small form factor cases, ITX cases, or anywhere where you can't get a large air cooler. 
The thing with single 120 millimeter radiators is because you have to run a fan at higher speeds with higher noise to get uh, you know, max cap cooling capability of this heat exchanger, you start to encroach into the area where big air coolers cool just as well, if not better, something like a Noctua big uh, cooling tower versus a single 120 millimeter radiator. The difference is you're much more likely to be able to fit this, this in an ITX case than like a Noctua D14 or whatever. So this is where sizing is more important with your chassis than the actual CPU itself. Now, if you've got the room and you want to step up and maybe deal with a little bit of overclocking and you want to kind of push your CPU a little farther, maybe apply the turbo clock to all your cores without increasing the clock speed, you're gonna find that the 240 millimeter variant or two 120 millimeter fans is going to be the sweet spot. This is where most people shop. This is the most common size you're gonna find for any AIO, regardless of the brand, because you, most cases on the market, very few do not support a 120 millimeter double or a 240 millimeter radiator. Now what you're gonna find here is that this is not double the cooling capacity of this. There is a diminishing return as you move up in sizing. It's a diminishing return exponentially flattening, what'd you say? Asymptotic. What he said, <laughs> asymptotic. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the 240 variant of all three of these, although they both belong to the same family of cooler, uh, the 240 has the highest RPM rating of the fans. Although all three of the fans look alike, they have the gray blades, they're like a static pressure optimized fan. This one is PWM controlled up to 2400 RPM. So what that means is if you're able to say, I don't care about the noise, I care about the cooling, then you could set this to its max RPM and just go balls to the wall with cooling and also balls to the wall with volume. So there's, that's something you wanna keep in mind. What we've seen kind of come to market more over the last couple of years are the 360 millimeter variants. Now what you're gonna find with this is a lot more cases are supporting 360s on the top, many of which are now supporting 360s on the front. What this allows you to do is gain more cooling capacity, more thermal capacity of the actual heat exchanger. With a 360 millimeter radiator, you are capable of running the fans at a lower speed, a lot less intrusive, but you have more air volume going through the heat exchanger, which means better cooling, it's slower to heat up, it's quicker to cool down, and you can allow yourself to have bigger overclocks without having to intrude in your space in terms of volume. So the actual heat exchanger size itself is only part of the formula. And I think a lot of people get caught up on that where they care more about the radiator size itself than the fans which are responsible for moving air through the radiator. If you were just to let these radiators sit static or, or uh, passive and no air is moving through them whatsoever, all three of these would eventually overheat. Because if you don't have air moving through this, taking the heat out of this, which is taking the heat out of the fluid and exhausting it to the atmosphere where it's then being dissipated, these do nothing. So fan choice is just as important. Fortunately with the Corsair coolers here, they are a standard PWM plug. So you don't have to worry about any sort of proprietary connector with changing out your fans. And so what a lot of people will often do is they'll take their favorite AIO that has features that they want, whether it be RGB or expandability or whatever, uh, then what they'll do is they'll take their favorite fan. Back in the day, one of the most popular fans out there for water cooling were the Gentle Typhoon. Unfortunately, they're not made anymore. There are other brands that are similar, but the Gentle Typhoon was king. That was the fan to have on your radiators if price was no object and cooling was the most important you know, desire of your water cooling loop. Now, all three of these coolers are designed with either a push or pull config. And that's another thing we're not gonna really get too in depth on on this video. We've talked about push-pull in the past. We'll do another test moving forward uh, where we do a push-pull config and see which cool is better. That's something that's usually up for debate. There's a lot of configurable variables that can impact those results, so it's kind of hard to come up with anything that's concrete. But all of these are designed with either a push or pull. Whether it's pulling the air through the rad or pushing the air through, you're only gonna have enough fans for one side of the radiator. But one thing you're gonna find that really varies between brands in terms of AIOs are going to be the features. Now Corsair features uh, the IQ software which allows you to control your pump and it can integrate with all your other Corsair products. Um, fortunately they do have standard plugs for the PWM circuit. You've got RGB on the pumps which are integrate into any other RGB uh, setup that is in your particular system. The, where is it, the 280, the H115i now, these, this one actually features RGB fans as well, where all three of these just feature a basic um, static pressure PWM fan with just a gray blade. 
but this one here actually is, is kind of the newer line, it's the platinum line, so you can get this in various sizes as well. It's just a different family of cooler that features, as I said earlier, a 140 millimeter fan. So you can, you can get a lot of cooling capability out of your AIO and reduce the cost if you're not interested in all the RGB features and such. Something else that can kind of impact the price of your cooler um, is also the, the quality of the materials that are used. So the H60, because it's designed to be more of an entry level, um, get the job done, not as many extra features to keep the cost low, features just a rubber quarter inch tube like this. It's, it's highly flexible, as you can see. I mean, flexibility is important. That was the cover, not the... Nothing broke, I promise. I went like that on the cover. Anyway, besides point. You have a rubber tubing, as you can see here, that's very, very flexible. I'm not a fan of FEP tubing, and if you see a cooler that's got FEP where it's just a flexible pipe and it's very rigid looking, those are very stiff. They kind of want to do their own thing. You can't twist them up as much, which makes, uh, it's my least favorite tubing on the market. But as you move up the product line, uh, you get a little bit more premium feature like the 240 here or the H100i Pro features a sleeved tube. So it's basically the same tube as this but it's got a sleeving on, on top of it. This is like a paracord type of sleeve. So it just gives it more of a premium look and feel. It's got the same flexibility as you would expect, so you can mount this however you need it and you know get the cables to where you want them to be. Um, all of the coolers feature a rotatable fitting on the pump, so you're not putting extra excess pressure on the barbs, which could crack. You don't want that over time. And then the H150i Pro is the same as the 100, only it's a 360 millimeter cooler as we already talked about. But I've got a lot of emails lately um, asking me specifically about AIOs and which one should they buy because if there's one thing that is apparent is the AIO market is heavily saturated and not just by the fluids that are contained in these, I don't know, bad joke, whatever. Um, there's, there are tons and tons of brands. There are brands that are just rebrands of other uh, manufacturers like Asatec. There are brands that are featuring, bringing in their own features that tie in with other uh, systems that are available like Corsair. Um, but there are so many different brands from both very entry level basic companies to brands that have been doing it for years. There's a lot of confusion out there on what people need. So in terms of priority, for me, it is making sure you get the largest size that will fit in your chassis comfortably. You might be able to fit a 240, but you may not be able to do it comfortably. As I mentioned, not all cases will give you enough room between the top of the case and where your motherboard sits. And if you're using any sort of an overclocking or gaming motherboard, it's probably gonna have a tall heat sink where the VRMs go, which could impact on the fan. Because it's not just the thickness of the radiator that matters, it's the thickness of the rad plus 25 more millimeters to clear the actual fans. So you have to keep that in mind, whether they be on top or they be on the bottom. So you might hold this up into your case and go, oh yeah, that fits, no problem, it clears. Until you put the fans on and guess what? Now you can't mount your radiator in there. If you're going with ITX case, um, one thing to keep in mind as well is although you may be able to fit the radiator in the fan, are you gonna be supplying enough intake to the, to the case to be able to supply the amount of air that this needs. So if this is exhausting, a 120 you know, millimeter fan, it's an exhaust, is there any intake on the front of the ITX case or on the bottom or on the top or whatever? These are the types of things you have to think about prior to installing your coolers. So hopefully this has been food for thought and it gives you some things to think about when you're shopping for your next AIO. They are all pretty much created equally in terms of what the heat exchangers themselves are capable of doing. These are all aluminum units that are featuring copper plates on the blocks with aluminum radiators. They all feature a non-corrosive coolant. That's not something to worry about. We've cut open a radiator that's been sitting for years with uh, the same fluid in there with mixed metals and aluminum. The sealed units are designed to run that way. So don't freak out about that. That's a whole different conversation, not something you need to worry about. So when it comes to AIOs, what is it that you guys often find confusing? Comment down below. Uh, if you guys have any answers to some of the comments you see down below, then feel free to have a civilized conversation about all-in-one coolers. Oftentimes you'll find that a premium AIO does not outperform a custom high-end water-cooled loop because a 360 is a 360 almost any way you look at it. Different metals, this is an aluminum rad versus a copper 360, you might find a couple of degrees of difference. What you tend to find in custom water cooling loops though is just the customized look. You can make it a uh, much more premium product and it usually will last longer in terms of serviceability. These are not designed to be serviced, an open loop is. But that's another conversation we'll have in another video later this summer because you know I like to do summer months or water cooling months around here on this channel. So if you have any topics you want us to talk about, make sure you let us know. And as always guys, we'll see you in the next one.